Good evening, I'm Julie Patterson. And I'm Paul Poteet. I believe it's time for Boomer TV again. I'm excited about tonight's episode. You better be because you know our, our, one of our uh, guests tonight. He gets very excited at Colts games. Oh, uh, Bob Laney Bob is Laney. on the show tonight. <laughs> He's amazing, right? He's been at it a long time yeah. and is the voice of the Colts officially. two years, so that's coming up on the show. We're going to meet Bob, and we're also going to meet a man who was a CPA for a long time, but he isn't anymore. He's reinvented himself. A lot of boomers are doing that yeah. these days. He's an Iron Man now, big triathlete. So he we'll meet him. Is and Iron Man. He's he's unbelievable. So you'll get to meet this gentleman, Todd. And, and this guy. Uh, or girl. Or, or girl. <laughs> look, look again. <laughs> yes. Punt. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I get to talk to uh, a lady who is a technology expert, and uh -huh. she's going to introduce us to uh, Alexa and the Google Doc. No, I think I mixed them up. Anyway, <laughs> she's going to straighten it all out. A smart home in our lovely Westport home. Just ask Google who you're talking to, and right? Google will be able to help you out. Yeah. And we're going to go out to the ball game. Yeah, Michael Atwood takes us to the Indians game. They have special nights, uh, different occasions. It's a great thing to do this summer with your grandkids or friends or uh, you need a night out. It's a good place to go. If you don't like peanuts and Cracker Jack, we also have salsa on this show. Oh, yes, with <laughs> mangoes being the main ingredient, mangoes. not tomatoes. So if you like mangoes, this segment is for you. <laughs> it's Even all you coming don't. up uh, here on the next half hour of Boomer TV. It's I'm, okay. I'm it's okay. sorry. Yeah. Take two! <laughs> no, we're keeping this one. TV is made possible with support from Westport Homes, dedicated to building homes for every chapter of life, with plans and details that match a customer's specific needs and style. More information on Westport Homes' lifestyle collection, including community locations, at westport-home.com. With over 70 years of combined legal experience, Altman, Poindexter, and Wyatt attorneys serve clients throughout central Indiana with wills, trust, and estates. More information is available at apwlawyer.com. Unique Home Solutions, serving more than 30,000 homeowners since 1983. Providing home remodeling services from minor updates to complete renovations with a mission to improve appearance and efficiency. More at uniquehomesolutions.org. Okay, raise your hand if you love to go to the Indianapolis Indians games. Ah! They're so much fun. Man, when they opened that place up, you remember the first time you know you were there and yeah. you thought, how did they get the lines just right that you get these great views? Oh my gosh, center field's a great view. Yeah. Behind uh, home plate's a great view. They have so many ways to see the game. A suite, and, and they celebrate so many different things. Every night you're there, it's something different. Somebody's having a party. Great place to visit with your grandkids or if you're looking for something fun to do this summer. Michael Atwood takes us there now. Talk about that buzz in the ballpark. What yeah. is that? Because it's something, something very old. You know, this is a yeah, really certainly old very sport, traditional. But uh -huh. you keep it fresh in some way. We do. We do with uh, new promotions every year. Uh, today's today is uh, it's a kids eat free Sunday, so lots of families come yes, out on Sundays. I can see them. So we have uh, free hot dog, free chips. <laughs> absolutely. So we have uh, usually characters from certain movies and TV shows come out. So we like to keep that lineup fresh. Um, we have daily deals that a lot of people really appeal to, whether it's like a Thursday craft beer night or we do fireworks on Friday nights after the game. Um, but there is something very traditional and something about baseball as, the as a national pastime that really appeals to people. Uh, the facility was built in 1996, the corner of Weston, Maryland in downtown Indianapolis. It was one of the first venues here in White River State Park. And downtown has continued to sort of explode in growth since then. Uh, you wouldn't know that the facility is 22 years old, 
but it is. Our, our facilities and stadium operations staff do such a beautiful job maintaining the facility. Our grounds crew has won a few awards for being the best grounds crew in minor league baseball. So we're really proud of the way the diamond looks as well. And we take uh, a lot of care maintaining and improving the facility too. The Indians themselves have been around oh Indianapolis gosh. since 1902. You're right, I was gonna say that. A lot of people don't know that. We've played baseball here in Indy over 100 years. There's a whole uh, timeline wall that we've constructed that kind of outlines the significant milestones in the history of the organization, which major league team we were affiliated with when. The second oldest professional baseball team in continuous existence. Yeah, it, it's, it says something about kind of where we've stood in the city of Indianapolis and the fan support that we've had for so long. We led minor league baseball in attendance for the third time in the last five years, just this last year. Uh, the two years we didn't lead minor league baseball, we actually set victory field attendance records. Uh, so the fan support has been there uh, through through many, many years. And we're just, we feel very fortunate of that. We don't take that for granted. And it's about kind of keeping the experience fresh so that people always want to come back. What are some of the other things that you think that perhaps people don't know about the Indianapolis Indians? I would say that uh, our big league affiliate, the Pittsburgh Pirates, I think there's a lot of people here in Indianapolis that are Chicago Cubs fans, Cincinnati Reds fans. Uh, the Pirates are such an important organization to us. They obviously funnel all of our players through Indianapolis here. Uh, but because the Pirates may not be as big of a spender on the, on the big league level as, you know, your typical New York Yankees or Boston Red Sox that we might think of, so many of our guys end up playing in the big leagues, and they really rely on our guys here at the AAA level. Uh, we had a, one of our top prospects, one of Pittsburgh's top prospects, Austin Meadows is an outfielder, just made his big league debut a couple years ago. He's already hit four home runs. Wow. Looks like he's going to stay for a while. We'll see. Uh, we always love to see those guys come back in a certain sense because we get to know them and uh, enjoy them personally. But we kind of root for their success, and we want them to make it at, the, at that stage for sure. I'm not feeling angry, but I don't know about those characters. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're not angry. They're actually quite friendly. Uh, these, these are the angry birds, right? So every Sunday we usually have a character out here for fans to meet. It's a big family day out here. We have kids eat free Sunday. So uh, for, with your ticket, you get free hot dog, chips, and water. Uh, but characters on Sundays are pretty right, right up a kid's alley for sure. And, and not to overshadow, and I want to give a shout out because he does so much here in the community, it's Rowdy. It is Rowdy. Rowdy's our guy for yeah. sure. Uh, Rowdy loves to be out, loves to be out among the people. Get in line. It's a great time to get Rowdy's autograph. Great time to meet him, get a picture as well. Charlie Henry, thanks so much for taking us out for to sure. the ballpark today. Yeah. It's going to be a wonderful game. It is. The sun's shining. Really appreciate you coming out and seeing what we're about. Thanks a lot. Yep. And for Boomer TV, I'm Michael Atwood. All right, Julie, here he comes. He's coming down. He's almost here. He's crossing the fifth. Eh, it's Bob Lamey. You know, he's an institution. <laughs> I think after 32 years with the Colts, we can well, call him that. With doing one particular yeah. thing in media for a long time. Well, is, he's good at it, and yeah, that's why. it's an amazing thing. So we caught up with him. Uh, yeah, he's the announcer for the Colts. You've heard his voice probably many times. Ed Wank talks to him, and let's find out what he's been up to. Brady out of the shotgun again. This crowd roaring. Takes the snap. Sets up. Sets up. Throws one over the knee. Intercepted. Marlon Jackson. Marlon's got it. We're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl. Marlon Jackson with the interception. He picked off Tom Brady. Bob Lamy, radio voice of the Colts. Thanks for joining us, man. My pleasure. Play by play. How long have you been with the Colts organization now? Well, if you count the days when I was with IBC mm -hmm. doing the games. This will be the 32nd year doing the play-by-play -play and wow. 35 covering them. How do you prep for a game? I prepare once the game's over. Uh, this Sunday's game's over. Mm -hmm. If we're on the road, I'm doing stats, covering, uh, get my stats updated mm -hmm. on the plane ride home. Yep. If we play a home game, I try to take my wife out to eat and then go home, and I start going through the same process. Tuesday is a day off for me, which means... I work 24-7 at home. Right. So it, it takes, I, I like to be done Friday so that Saturday if I'm home, I can go to a movie. Sure. If I'm on the road, I can go turn on the TV and watch the college game of the week or whatever. Uh, and then the game next Sunday and then it starts all over again. Yep. I want to take you uh, to my favorite Bob Lamy moment of all time which is a uh, 2006 AFC Championship game. Uh, Tom Brady's in the shotgun 
we're up by four. There are 23 seconds when the ball is snapped. And I believe the call went something like this. I won't be able to bring your level of excitement to. Uh, I can't now <laughs> either. So. Intercepted. Marlon Jackson. Marlon's got it. We're going to the Super Bowl. The joy is palpable in your voice. The excitement is overwhelming. The only thing that topped it for me was several weeks later when we won the Super Bowl right. and came home for the pep rally at Hoosier Dome. Yep. So I get into the building, and as I walk in the building, I'm hearing this unbelievable noise. It was the fans. And the ride around the circle, and then that moment, and then when the players came in, it just mushroomed. But those are the two best days and the title game. It was awesome. It was, there's nothing in pro sports, to my way of thinking, of, other than winning the Super Bowl. How's the team going to be this year? Got a prediction? Uh, I will tell you this. This is a better football team. Um, we've brought in some guys. Our old line is much better. Okay, good. Uh, we've got to get Andrew throwing. Uh, Frank said again today, mm -hmm. he's ready. I mean, Frank Wright, the new coach. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's going to do a great job here. He understands the city. Uh huh. He understands the fan base. He understands the owner. Uh, he understands what he has to do. The general manager, Chris Ballard, uh, keeps a very close touch with my personal best GM we've ever had here, Bill Poli. Right. They're close. And I see Chris doing things that Bill did. We're going to be a much better football team than we've been. And a lot of it is players. I mean, mm -hmm. the last two drafts make up for some that weren't that good. Okay. Going back six, seven, eight years, sure Bill enough. had some bad drafts. Oh, sure. You know, we, everybody does. Um, I like the way this, this franchise is headed job-wise. This has been mm -hmm. the best job I've ever had, and I've had some good ones. Bob Lamy, thank you so much for taking the time. Not a problem, man. Continued success. For Boomer TV, my name is Ed Wank. Where's Alexa? Have you seen her? She's oh. over on the counter. She's over on the with, counter. With Google. Yeah, now you're you're not into this yet. I'm not. Well, I don't I don't own any of these smart home devices. Neither do we. Yeah. But I'm very curious about them. Yeah. And well. how they work and maybe I'd like to own one. I don't know. Well, I have questions, Paul. Lots of questions. Well, maybe you could ask a or maybe you could ask our guest. Yeah, Regina <laughs> Miller is our guest and we're going to ask her all the questions about uh, making your home smarter. Okay, we are here with Regina Miller. She is with Geek in Pink, the founder of it. Uh, she's a technology expert, and she's here to walk us through how to set up a smart home, if that's something you're interested in. And I think a lot of boomers want to make their lives a little easier, and uh, these devices seem to do things for you, right? Yes. So what do we have here, Regina? So today we have uh, an Amazon Echo Dot. Uh, some people refer to it as Alexa, which is the, um, the virtual intelligence that actually um, you hear speaking to you. And then uh, a competing product, uh, the Google Home Mini, um, which does something similar. Um, and then finally, we have a light bulb, a Wi-Fi enabled light bulb. Oh, what? Yes. So you this, can talk to the light. You can. Oh. You can. So uh, you can either use it's the app that is designed specifically for that, okay. or you can enable a skill in one of these two devices and announce to it when you come in that you want the LED light to change to blue, or you can set up moods and scenes, and it will follow the cue of a whole scene. So you could have a, a different device in different rooms. Uh, or use it for different things? They would, for most people, be redundant technology. You wouldn't need both. Um, I keep both because I'm paying close attention to how they're evolving. In the end, when you buy the speaker, you have a static product, but the, in, the artificial intelligence that's going on behind the scenes is constantly evolving. Google can update this yes. just while it's plugged in, and then you can learn something new that it does yes. every week or every month or every day. Right, right. Oh, so, yeah. And a lot of it is just by paying attention. I just throw questions and commands out to them all the time. Let's do some of that. Okay. Show me how they work. For example, when I'm cooking, if I need uh, to double a recipe. Hey Google, how many quarts are in a gallon? One U.S. liquid gallon equals four U.S. liquid quarts. Alexa, I need a banana bread recipe. 
Okay, for banana bread. I recommend a top recipe called banana bread, which takes one hour and 15 minutes to make. And they truly do evolve. Like for example, mm -hmm. my, my setup at home, some of mine are actually telling me you're welcome now because I, I have grandchildren at home and when I say, hey Alexa, can I have this? I still say thank you even though it's a machine. Yeah. And we noticed um, actually a couple of weeks ago that some of mine are now saying you're welcome, which That's was surprising. Great. Okay, what other kinds of things uh, could a baby boomer use these for? You can connect them to your Ring app if you don't want to use it for your, the Explain doorbells. Explain what the Ring is. So it is a doorbell with a camera and a speaker and they can also be tied to other devices like the um, spotlights. So I don't know if you've seen the commercials or not, but they can all be integrated and that there's a motion um, outside, then the spotlight comes on and you can actually speak across the, the ones that have. Whether um, you're actually at home or not. So if you have um, a, a contractor coming in, you can say, let me know when you get there and raise the garage door and lower it and be done. One thing boomers are always interested in, well, everybody, weather. Can we ask it about the weather forecast? Because rain might be moving in soon. Absolutely. Hey Google, what is the weather forecast for tomorrow? In Greenwood tomorrow, there will be scattered thunderstorms with a high of 85 and a low of 62. What about going places? Can it tell you how long it'll take? Yes, um, so you can either ask by uh, landmarks or by address or intersections. So, hey Google, how long will it take to get to Greenwood Park Mall? With light traffic, it will take you 13 minutes to get to Greenwood Park Mall by car. Regina Miller with Geek and Pink. Uh, we have learned a lot today. Thank you for walking us through these devices. It makes me much more interested in getting one. They are yeah, very now exciting. That I'm a little educated, yeah. so well, appreciate that. Well, let's head to the mall. What do you say? Let's go. All right, Thank Julie you. Patterson, Boomer TV. So, Paul, 140.6 miles. <laughs> That's an Iron Man. Can you imagine? I mean, you've run. I, I did a half Iron Man, so I can yeah. kind of imagine. But you talked to a gentleman. Tell me about this this Iron Man you met. He is a guy who has, uh, you know, experience with running marathons and in the race of life has taken a different course along the way. Used to be a CPA? Yeah, used to be a CPA and found it didn't add up, Julie. Oh my gosh, so now he's a personal trainer. And he leads others into this world of physical fitness. Come meet our Iron Man. We're here with Todd Schellenberger, who is not going to talk about being a CPA, are you? No, hopefully not much at all. <laughs> Glad no. to leave that behind. He doesn't look like a CPA. You look like what you are now, but we have a story of reinvention that involves getting from one place to another, I guess f literally and figuratively. Exactly. <laughs> because you start in one place, and then many miles later, you end up uh, in another one. So the, first of all, you're wearing the t-shirt of the Baxter YMCA. And for once, I'll be pro-tornado. Normally, I'm anti-tornado <laughs> yes, in the very. weather business, but that says the tri-tornadoes. And how did this triathlon team come together, and how did you adopt uh, tornadoes? <laughs> well, it's funny because, um, again, the tornado, very powerful thing, as mm -hmm. you so alluded to. Um, and the Baxter YMCA actually got hit by a tornado back in 2002. That's right, yeah. And afterwards, um, it was kind of actually ended up being a good thing at the end after everybody was okay and whatnot, but it enabled the Baxter to kind of reinvent itself kind of the same way I did, um, and become a much better facility and be able to minister to a heck of a lot more people with the additional things they got to do. And so I kind of thought it would be a nice little tribute to kind of remember mm -hmm. and do. And again, it's a powerful thing. And when you're a triathlete or runner, you want to be strong. So uh, I thought it worked well and ran it by a few people and liked it. And so that's where it went. Now, I have uh, dabbled with running in my middle age. I uh -huh. didn't start until I got into uh, my, my 40s. Triathlon, though, that's a whole, you know, another ball of wax. That's right. Well, there's a whole lot of you that were runners that end up being triathletes because generally what happens is they run a lot and then they start to get hurt and then they kind of want something to kind of break it up and so mm -hmm. they come over and start being triathletes. Uh, so swimming, biking, running, uh, all sorts of different distances, short little ones that take maybe 20 to 30 minutes on the short side of really short ones, all the way up to the Ironman distance that you see on TV that, right. you know, the, the slow people go 17 hours, the fast people are going eight <laughs> hours. So uh, lots of variety, lots of different places people can plug 
plug in so it works out very well. Are there some really strange stories of people that you could, and I don't mean strange, but I mean really inspirational stories or people that oh. stand out in your mind? Oh yeah, all the time. I mean, again, this sport draws just so many different people from so many different walks of life. Um, you know, people who are either addicted to drugs or alcohol or things where they were down and completely out and they saw either the Iron Man or some triathlon video and they started doing triathlon and now they're back up. Or uh, people with family tragedies that, you know, their, their outlet was triathlon uh, going. And there's always people that, um, you know, ha are, are missing hands or legs that you're out there on the course with. And that's the one thing that's really nice about triathlon. Everybody's out there, the pros down to the last person. They all run the same course at the same time, and so you're out there with everybody. And you know, just you know, people sitting by the side of the road, uh, taking care of their, their prosthetic leg or whatever, and then they hop back up and keep going. <laughs> I mean, and again, you're you're feeling bad at a point, and you see somebody like that that is, you know, they really are struggling and going, and you're like, you know, this is awesome that you get to share this this stage with them and the the experience. So it's it's really a pretty neat thing. It doesn't sound like you're going back anytime soon. <laughs> Down, <laughs> the, the other direction. Yes, I <laughs> hope not. I, I, I hope that I continue to have it rolling forward that I, I don't have to go back and utilize my CPA. Even though, again, it, it's spectacular and it's been so good to me over the years. I spent you know 17 to, to 18 years doing straight accounting work. Um, and again, I really enjoyed it at the time. Uh, but when the, this opportunity presented itself and I was able to capitalize on it, it's, it's just been fantastic we've and had, very enjoyable. Yeah, we've had a lot of stories about reinvention on this show, and I think we have to put you in that category, that's for sure. Awesome. Thanks for being with hey, us, Todd. Hey, my pleasure. Good Thank luck you so down much. the uh, road. All right. Appreciate yeah, it. Just run out of here right now. We'll All right. We'll get going. <laughs> that's it for now. Paul Poutine for Boomer TV. Hey, it's time to eat, Julie. Oh, my gosh, Paul. One track mind, right? <laughs> or at least it's time to watch somebody make something very delicious. We love Souls on this show, don't we? Sure we do. And yeah. Mary Snell is making a very special kind with mangoes. Do you like mangoes? Yeah, I do like mangoes. Well, then you're going to really like this segment. Well, if you're looking for a recipe that's light, refreshing, low in calories, and easy to make, you're going to love this recipe. It's one of my favorite ones, and it's called mango salsa. Yep, you heard right. I said salsa, and most salsas are tomato-based, but this particular salsa, the main ingredient is mango. And the one thing that I love about this recipe is you can make it any time of the year because mangoes are available year-round. So first things first, how do we pick a mango? And once we pick that mango, how do you cut it? That can sometimes be the most challenging part of the entire recipe. The way to tell if they're um, ripe enough for the recipe is that you actually have to pick it up and give it a gentle squeeze. And you may actually want to smell the bottom because you want sort of this fruity aroma as well. So color is not an indicator. You just want to pick it up and give it a gentle squeeze like we do with peaches and avocados. So once you've found that ripe mango, I'm going to teach you how to cut the mango. We're actually looking for a little ridge. I kind of like to call it the nose of the mango because a mango has a very uh, wide, long pit. And if you're not going to cut the mango the right way, you're going to hit the, the pit the wrong way and really create a mess. So here's that little ridge on this particular mango and uh, set it down on your cutting board so that little nose is actually sort of looking at you. Now cut off the bottom just a bit because we want to make sure we have a flat surface. There I am, I've got my mango sitting on my cutting board. The little ridge is facing my nose as well. And you know what, there are a lot of ways to cut a mango, but I have found the easiest way to cut a mango and that is actually purchasing one of these mango cutters. You'll notice that the inside already has um, room to go around that pit. So you set it on top of your mango very nicely. Oh, I can tell this one is a very nice ripe mango because it'll go right down the middle. And look what I have, two beautiful halves of mango. Oh my goodness, I love this because again, this deep yellow color really tells me nutrient-wise it's high in vitamin A, it's also high in vitamin C and lots of fiber. So now we've got these two halves to work with, and right now all we need to do then is peel the skin off, comes off so easily with a peeler. And once you do that, you now have a workable piece of mango. And I'm going to go ahead and slice this and dice it into small pieces, getting it ready for my salsa. Again, oh wow, this is really a nice ripe mango. Once you've diced it, the entire mango, go ahead and put that in your bowl, getting it ready for the other ingredients. 
And like I said, this is an easy recipe. It's got a total of five ingredients. We've got the mango, my red onion, which has, oh, probably about a third of a cup of chopped red onion. Go ahead and put that in your bowl. The jalapeno pepper, probably about a tablespoon. Now the pepper is gonna give it a nice kick, a little bit of heat, and the way the sweetness from the mango and that little bit of heat from the jalapeno pepper come together, it's just unbelievable. The other ingredient that goes in there is some juice from a lime. So again, go squeeze that into your mixture. A little bit of juice right there. Put some cilantro into your mixture. Mix it up. And this type of recipe, you want, to, you want the flavors to really blend together. So I like to put in the refrigerator for about two hours before my event. Everything kind of works together. And then voila, we have the final recipe over here. So I hope you enjoy this mango salsa recipe. And I'm Mary Snell with Boomer TV. All right, let's close this show down. Okay, first, Julie, I know that you've had some uh, terrific jokes. Thank you. <laughs> at the end of this, what do you call? Oh, you have one now? I may have one. Oh, here. thanks it for starts coming out, to the party. It's what do you call cheese on steroids? Uh, oh. Shredded. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's cute. Okay, I got one. Okay. Um, what do you call it when a bunch of light bulbs get together for a party? What? Wait, I didn't do it right. What what happens? <laughs> did you hear about? What happened? Oh, you tell it then. What happens, or did you hear about all the light bulbs that got together for a party? No. It was pretty lit. <laughs> some people just can't tell the joke. We need some help. So if you've got something that you think would be a good show closer, uh, let us know. We'll even pay you off. You know what? Info at IndieBoomer.com. Give us a joke, and we will, in return, if we use your joke, give you a family four-pack to the Indiana Historical Society. That is lit. That is totally Again, lit, Julie P. Info at IndieBoomer.com. <laughs> Have a great night. Uh, it's almost 8 o'clock, so. Uh, kick back. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, and your light bulbs. Right. Yeah. Lit. For more All Things Boomer, just visit our website. That's IndieBoomer.com. Indie Boomer connects TV, magazine, and radio. It contains useful information for baby boomers all over the Indianapolis metropolitan area. And you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Pick up Indie Boomer magazine at most Kroger stores and libraries. Look for us all over Indie. Listen to Boomer Radio every Saturday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. on Freedom 95 with a rebroadcast Sundays at 7.30. Indie Boomer, for the next chapter of your life. Boomer TV is made possible with support from... Westport Homes, dedicated to building homes for every chapter of life with plans and details that match a customer's specific needs and style. More information on Westport Homes' lifestyle collection, including community locations, at westport-home.com. With over 70 years of combined legal experience, Altman, Poindexter, and Wyatt attorneys serve clients throughout central Indiana with wills, trust, and estates. More information is available at apwlawyer.com. Unique Home Solutions, serving more than 30,000 homeowners since 1983. Providing home remodeling services from minor updates to complete renovations with a mission to improve appearance and efficiency. More at uniquehomesolutions.org.